All right, let's let's go through this um this Earth game. And I'll because you guys already watched this live, I'm just gonna talk over it. I'm gonna do a lot of pausing. Got gonna do a lot of analyzing. Uh, let's let's go back. I forgot to talk about the mulligan. I went to reach for my water. All right, so this is my first hand. And mind you, I'm playing against the action GDI variant. So a lot of things that the action variant does is they have a lot of early game damage. And they don't do it by playing units. They do it by playing actions. So whenever you play a immediate unit, it um, nine times out of ten is going to die immediately. So by playing a unit like at the beginning of the game against their deck, you're you're... Your card is going to die, for sure. So if I play Kareen, you know, she'll die. If I play Iyasu, he'll die. If I play Jake, he'll die. So this hand, for that reason, is just not good. Um, But alternatively, what I could have done was I could have used Seven Soaring Spirits at 10, and then, you know, play either of these units. But it's kind of bad. You, you never really want to play a naked Kareen. And you never really want to play a Ayasu that you can't follow up with. Because Ayasu, when you play this unit, it, it usually requires you to have at least... Um, you want to have at least a full board or units that you can just keep playing back-to-back. -back. But the early game is usually the most messy of all tap-in phases that a lot of stuff dies... So for that reason, either you have, you do one of two things uh, playing Teppin in the early game. You either have really aggressive um, plays to, to push advantage, or you kind of just bait out your opponent and just play very controlled, play very defensively, and just like drag the game out. Because not all decks are always going to have like early game pressure, like... Um, this action GDI has a lot of early game pressure. No, actually, it's a more of a control deck. Never mind. Um, Oichi, Oichi, Oichi is a early game pressure having deck. Like they have really good early game. And my deck, my early game sucks because my units um have shield and they don't destroy your cards. I destroy your cards by trading. So yeah, a lot of green early game sucks really bad. Not gonna lie. So that's why you'll see like a lot of green players and some other players, they'll usually just play defensively early on because they know that the time that they pop off is mid game. You know, you will have games like that where your early game is bad, but you can set up for mid game and then, then you start to like start posing a threat. So that's what a lot of me playing green um, happens here. Because I'm not going to win the early game. There's no way in heck. So I mulligan here and I get a really good hand. I get Bombast, which is amazing in the mirror. I mean, not mirror. Against um, the action deck. Because I know they're going to wait. And by having Bombast, I can activate it early. And this means that I don't have to activate Bombast later in the game. And this also means that I get a cheaper unit. So not having to use Bombast like later in the game is, is pretty good in my opinion. Um, another reason why you want cheaper units uh, with Bombast early. Because even though like it's only reducing the cost by 2. So technically you paid the same amount. Is there are chain activations. Having a cheaper unit um, means that you can activate more triggers onto uh, the 3MP Kareen. And you can do that a lot faster. It's all about timing. So here I wait about 10. I don't do it at 10. I do it at 9. Because I'm forcing him to, to use like the cards and stuff. So then I follow up with another Bombast. That's great. I was hoping to draw into Karin here, but I obviously didn't get it. 
not not getting the Kareen was pretty bad. Um, but it would have paid off a lot if I had the Kareen here. Because that would have meant that I got like an extra shield or something like that. Uh, I do go ahead and play Armika here. And Armika is really good in this matchup. Because Armika has a ton of life that they have to chip down. Like it, it's Armika gets so much life that it doesn't make sense. That's how that's how much life she she gets. It doesn't make sense on how much life she gets, and it it really forces the GDI player's hand here. And obviously, I'm gonna hard tank it so I make it into a bigger threat. You know, they have to chip down all that life when they can't. I'm getting ready to use Jake because I think I have uh, four memory here, yeah. But they obviously don't kill it. I'm gonna use Karin here to seal the Luthia. Uh, they copied my my Armika, which was a good play. I'm gonna keep that. Um. The Armika surprisingly just lives. He gets a really bad split here. Oh, I guess she doesn't live. I think I block with another Armika. That's that's what happened. And I just waited out because I know that the goal here is to is to build up to something cuz right now I'm not winning the game. But I need to make uh force him to to waste his MP. And I also need to get rid of the his Mika. So, see see okay. So he just used his liberating slash which was very high cost. I mean not high cost. It was um very important in his deck. To, to kill one of my Armikas, that means Armika did her job. Armika did her job because it forced a Liberating Slash. But also, the third time that I play my Armikas, if you go back throughout my whole game, you'll notice that Earth spent so much MP and so many cards um, against Armika that it benefited me so much. It benefit me so much that he was spending all this MP to just deal with Armika. So having Armika was very crucial in this matchup. And it does get me to like um, a better mid game, a better late game. And I'm just letting him chip down the Armika because I see that I have um, 3 drop Korean in my hand. And I also have Legend Chris. So my thought process here is to wait until I get the um you know the Chris until I get the uh the Karin here. Also I messed up. I should have potentially blocked one of those units. That would have made me win this game. I should have blocked, but I ended up taking both those damage. I just didn't real um I just didn't I don't know how to say it, but basically, I didn't know how the game was going to shake out, but had I just blocked any of those units, I would have won this game, because it did come down to one point. So he cleared my board, you know, and I cleared his board. I'm obviously, um, I think I actually have more mana than him. I have more MP than this guy. Even though I'm losing on health. But I 100% should have blocked either of those those units. Otherwise, I w then I wouldn't have lost. So what I did here was... I just played 
a bunch of units to give each other like st um, shields and health and all this stuff. And I'm just healing. So I shield here. And I want to use Doll's Memories on their Jaggy, but I don't think they give me the chance. Oh, they did, but I didn't have enough mana to really justify it. Uh, I go for Feline here because I wanted the MP. I don't remember how this shakes out um, for the Feline. Let's see how this works. So he does Sun Goddess. But in so it is actually reality, it doesn't count. He trump cards here because he, he has to or he can't win. And that's where I knew I wish I had a seal in my hand. But I think I might have like already used it or something, I don't know. So the heart tank may have, may or may not have mattered, I don't I don't really know. Um, I'm struggling to, to kill his stuff. He's also going to struggle killing my stuff. I ended up Doll's Memory here. Um, he does get his thing. You know, I mean, when I was younger, I don't know how many songs... He does another card that, that kills her, yeah. I'm glad I didn't use the disarm on this Leon. I still have to deal with this stupid Leon. Block. Because I have Seven Soaring Spirits uh, active right now. Trade. And then he goes Dragoon here. You need to finish things. I heal. If I had one more health... Hold on. If I had one more health that added to X here, I would have won the game. Additionally, um, had I not taken some of the free damage that I took earlier in the game, I, I also would have won. This, this game came down to one point. Let me, let me, I actually wanted to see this. Hold on. Was how fast did I activate Disarm when I had the mana for it? Actually, I don't think it matters. That cliche of art is not I dropped it, so I like, I, I missed like a nanosecond, but I don't think it mattered. But you have to finish and you have to put it out because... Otherwise, you're just the guy. I can't block, obviously. You're not the guy doing it. You get better by and this is why it came down to one point of damage. Because I put him to one health, and he can't kill Chun. And, you know, obviously, if I had one more health, he would not have killed me. This, this game came down to the last point. And I made two screw-ups. Actually, just one. I made one screw-up. I made one screw-up that I didn't block those units because I was trying to make up for a big um, Kareen Chris Redfield setup. That was the one play mistake that cost me the game. I would have won this game otherwise. Yo, is this... This is like a sad song. Don't play that shit just because I lost. Alright, there we go.
Ooh. This was a good game. Because I won. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, I ended up keeping this hand because I have Karin and um, and Bombast. Any any hand where you have Karin and Bombast is a good hand. Because it means you can stack an extra shield uh, based on just waiting. Because usually when you set up Karin, the best way to do it is to do it all in one motion. So if you play this deck or you see other people play this deck, a lot of times the optimal play is to hold all of your MP and then just drop all the units so your opponent doesn't, especially red players, so that red players don't destroy it with like, I don't know, um, damage. Like see right there, he reacted to the, the Kareen being played, but I played Chris right after and that gave her a double shield. And then if he kills any of these other units, then I get to play another unit. That's fine. Play another... He won't even let me play another unit. That's fine. Let me, let me play the unit, dude. Nope. All right. Cool. I do put the shield on the Kareen here. And the reason why I do that is because he can't really kill the Kareen. And it is free MP, so just stacking another shield on it is pretty okay. It's not amazing, but it's it's me using the free MP that was given to me. I go ahead and do Ayasu here, which I kind of regret. I end up winning this game though, so I, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, I play Rufus here because, you know, playing another Karin doesn't make sense. Actually, I get really rewarded for, for playing the Ayasu because he lived. And I have like a huge board. I got rewarded, but I feel like Ayasu should have died. But I did get rewarded here. Oh, yeah, that shit. <laughs> Himiko. Yeah, Himiko got me got me messed up, dude. I try to get it in time for um for before Ayasu hit to potentially give him like a, another shield. But obviously I missed the timing. I guess I should have played Karin. And then that would have put me in a better situation. Because that means that... Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just I'm just overthinking it. Everything was going to die because of that Himiko. So, me missing the timing was actually pretty decent. So right now he's just filtering because he can't deal with the Kareen on the field. And I ended up playing Jake... Which is very resilient. He ends up losing here because he just can't deal with the Kareen anymore. Because I like, just keep shielding her. You know what's funny? is She's laughing the whole time too. She's like, yes, eat my shields. She's just laughing. Like, Look at my shields, Denjin. I opt not to play any actions here. Because giving him free MP just means that he gets to blow up my board. So I just let it roll. And yay, we got that game. Oh, I did fail to mention one thing earlier. About... About me playing against Earth. And... That's... Why did I pick... To lead with X? Instead of Feline. So, Feline is really good against most decks and good against uh, red decks that rely on playing units. But against the red action variant of, of red, red does way more damage than three. So, Shield Spire's um, Besieged effect, or, you know, the Reduce effect, 
never comes in clutch ever. The reduced damage effect on Shield Spire never comes in clutch. Because they're always dealing uh, four or more damage. So in this case, leading with X made the most sense. Because Heart Tank would, would still give me that flat value that I needed. So yeah, I'm actually not very confident in this matchup. Uh, two gold orbs early is really bad because it's it costs way too much MP and no value is coming from that. Uh, this this hand's very awkward. What I ended up doing was doing leader summons and then um, Itsuki because Ayasu is a a very good card, but you have to play him in the right moments. You just can't play Ayasu in the early game and expect him to. To do work because he'll just die the early game is just so messy all the time so you have to play him in the mid game good monson can send me the the matchup if you want to yeah um i won't look at it now because i'm definitely gonna get he head off after this but you you are free to send me stuff Alright, so I do do Ayasu. I thought I was going to do Itsuki, but I do Ayasu instead. I go ahead and seal the Lucia. I left that hit because it's not killing Ayasu and I have two shields in hand. But what's crazy to me is... I, yeah, I ended up killing him. Because it's not worth to use the shields on him. And then he drops FDR. This is where I messed up. I should have... Okay. So this was... This is where everything went downhill. So, like um, Nintendo said, FDR is at 3. And I think I'm going to actually click on it soon. So you can see that his action count is at 3. And as you can see in my hand, if I use Jaggies, it'll do nothing. So the play here to to beat this is I need to go to either 7 or 9 MP to deal with this shit. Because if I drop a naked um, X, what's going to happen is the X will die. And then I still have to deal with this um, this FDR that I can't stop. In addition to that... If I do, but what I ended up doing was because I was already at 30 health, that I would just take all the damage. That was my mind, mind process at the time. So I just, I just took all the damage because it doesn't make sense to drop a naked X. And this is where I could have played X, used shield to block, and then potentially I could I could make out of this potentially but I don't I don't think I would have because at this point he already saved up so much MP I feel like he would have won the action war in my opinion so he hits me again um this is where I could have played X But instead, I decided to go Seven Soaring Spirits because I felt like... So the reason why I did Seven Soaring Spirits was because I figured he would have tried to filter or try to destroy my board. I didn't realize that he literally had every single burn card in his hand. Like... This situation, I have 12 health. The only time this would be a very bad situation for me is if he has all the burn cards in his hand. But... In most cases, 
him in his deck he would actually probably had more burn cards than like on the field instead of like to my face So I do a shield here because I, I need a cycle to somehow seal this um, this Ryu, which I never found. And I need to drop X here and I need to drop shield, but then he puts um, Leon and I decide to block Leon. Because that was the most immediate damage. And uh, what's his face? Kyle said that I should not have activated shield here. But I don't know. I feel like I was screwed either way with, with my hand. Yeah, like... The, the game was lost at this point. Because that Ryu was going to screw me up. I didn't have an answer to him. Like, I had to draw into a seal. I had to... I had to play cards in hopes that he would play a card and then mess up. And then if he responded, then I would respond, seal the unit, and then I'd be able to like come back for a bit. Yeah, it didn't matter. It really didn't matter. Because I had no other plays besides that shield. And if I had not played the shield, he would have hit for three. And then he would have uh, did double sneak attack. It didn't matter. Um, what did matter was that first game though. Now re-watching it. This game went down to 1 HP. If I had one more HP, this Chun would have had another attack line and then killed Amy. But I'll admit, I messed up. I took, I took more damage than I should have. And it was exactly right. Where was it? It was when I did this. So you can see like I have. Um, not here. I definitely need to build up a little bit more. But right here. Right here is when I should have blocked. I should have blocked Kareen to, to the mole and then drop Chris. And that would have saved me two health. And that wouldn't have had an, any other effect uh, throughout the game. I just should have blocked that one time. And the the tournament may have like gone very differently had I, you know, t paid more attention. I don't know. Like I said, if you play Teppin, at least with my playstyle as well, or any card games at all, you always want to like squeeze out the last bit that you can like optimize optimize all the time and that is one scenario where I didn't do it and it cost me the game